This is what God discovered about men. He said, for all seek their own, not the things that belong to Christ. God has come to that conclusion now that everybody shouting, singing, and praising, they came for their own. It has nothing to do with him. God knows. Is he the worshiper? Is he the dancer? Is he the prayer warrior? Is he the apostle quoting scripture? He is there for himself. He has nothing to do with me. In fact, nowadays, it's more marketable when you use God. And so people use the name of God to achieve their own ambition and gain. In 2 Timothy 3 verse 2, he said, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient, unthankful. And in verse 5, he said, they don't love God. So a point comes where people are praying, but they are not in relationship with God. A point comes, people are fasting, they are not in relationship with God. A point comes, people are giving, they are not in relationship with God. They are only there to use God. They taught them that if you give, it will be given unto you. Is it true? So they try it. It happens. Ah. The next time, they give more. They now told them, <laughs> if you give, you either receive 30 fold, 60 fold, or 100 fold. So now, when they want to give, they garnish their giving with prayer so that they will not receive 30 fold. They want to receive 100 fold. And God just stands behind and is looking for the generation. Even the things of the spirit, they have perverted it so much that God himself is shocked at the ingenuity of a crafty generation. Somebody wants to give. What is, come, what is invoking is hundredfold. And he has come to the level where normally he can get 30 fold but he wants to upgrade to 100 fold so sometimes he even garnishes with fasting he will put the money on the table in the in the room and pray around it for two hours this seed is productive and to make it worse they now teach us to give to fruitful ground so don't give to the poor the poor is not a fruitful ground better give it to a church and if you are giving to a church wait check Find out what is the size of the congregation. Is it up to 20,000? That is a sign that the anointing there is working. If you go and give your money to a church that is 20, you are, now you, you are, you, that's your business. Because that's not a faithful ground. That ground is a dry ground. <laughs> or you want to give, they check, it's miracle. Are miracles happening there? So you want to go and cast your seed where there's no hope. Bro, be wise. Be wise. In the last days, wisdom is profitable to direct. Meanwhile, in the days of old, in the days of old, the concept of giving was twofold. Go and check the whole New Testament. Number one is to create equity. That's why they gave in the New Testament, to create equity. He said there was none among them that lacked. And number two is to advance God's kingdom. These were the two things that motivated their giving apart from love for God. So in the, in the early church, they would rather give to a church that is struggling than to give to a church that is prosperous. Because the work of God here is suffering and they want to upgrade it. But our selfish generation, they call that place dry ground. And they don't only give, to, they don't only avoid dry ground, they also avoid the poor. Meanwhile, the Bible said, him that lended to the poor, lended to the Lord. But they don't have a relationship with God. Why do they care? self-preservation do you see why when you bring your seed to church even though you see this brother praying every day here yeah 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 you will wait for until the apostle comes i am the only person you want to give your seed because when you check you perceive that the scepter of the ministry is with this man and he seems to be more anointed and the brother who is doing haba, haba. even the son that he's wearing while leading prayer is already torn you will never be moved to say sir please god bless you never you see hundred people queue up they want to give to apostle and they want they give they touch you here they touch here they touch here they have carried something <laughs> selfishness and self-centeredness i am not the only minister here sir somebody is praying here that's why the atmosphere is created 
How many of you have walked to the wire person and say, Hi, ah, I was blessed. Please take this seed. Just to encourage the person. Never. You will never give her a seed to encourage her. You want all your seed to come to the apostle. Because you are hoping that the last testimony you heard, they said somebody gave, you gave a prophetic word. So now you are waiting for a word. You are waiting for a word. And so church becomes a pyramidal system. All the testimony must be about the set man. Everybody must call the name of the set man. So that anything happening will only happen around the set man. It's called Ponzi skin. I'm not the only anointed person here, sir. And I'm not the only person laboring here. And you don't only give to receive a prophetic word. Sometimes give to the usher to encourage the person. You came here for three months and every day you saw that person on duty. Encourage that person. It's called brotherly love. <laughs> Self-preservation. The operation of this age. And even when God's servant received the seed, it will never go around. God's servant is the only one who is called. And church started, all of them were friends. After 10 years, God's servant becomes a demigod. Others become servant. Because he will make sure he will create that gap and it will be very clear to know who is in charge. Meanwhile, when God was accusing the sons of Levi, this is why he accused them. The Malachi 3.2 that we always quote is not for the members. It's for the high priest and the Levites. Tight comes in. You, 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 you milk tight out of everybody and you keep it for yourself. And others are struggling. Others are in pain. Man of God is changing suit every day. Every other pastor comes up with rag. Do you now see that even the world system is more just than the church now? When you go to the hospital, if the MD show up and the deputy show up, you can't tell the difference. Because they, they ensure that the salary structure is designed in such a way that everybody will take something home. The world system is more righteous. Make sure you don't choke those who work under you. Make sure. Make sure. If not, your Christianity is fake. It's fake. Your Christianity is fake. I started paying salary from the first month. For those who are working. Even among the volunteers, there are some we check. We discover that Kai, this volunteer can't pay transport. The person wants to serve God, but Kai, even transport fare to come and serve God is not there. We conscript them and start paying them. Something, at least enough. self-preservation is killing what God is doing and we stand up and claim we preach all the kingdom and the kingdom will never reflect in the life of people it's the spirit of this age selfishness and this is why you see many people love the world and forsake Christ in 2 Timothy 4 10 he said for Demas had forsaken me, having loved this present world and is departed unto Thessalonica. The guy came to church, gave his all, but he checked after two years, he discovered that car. The work he was doing in the the work he was doing in the hospital was more effective. He rather served God from the hospital. The salary is not paid, it's not up to minimum wage. And you must pay tight, pay first fruit, <laughs> and give prophetic seed. The week they give you offering, pastor will start watching everybody like this. 
I didn't see your tithe. When last did you give your first fruit? Have you given any prophetic seed? The 10,000 they pay you, you will give church 7,000 back. <laughs> Kai. The guy will say, please, I will go and be a cleaner somewhere. At least that one I can pay, I will pay my tithe out of it. <laughs> it looks funny, but this is why we are powerless. I'm telling you, this is why we are weak. This is why the world is ridiculing the church. Proverbs 21 verse 13. I'll keep it brief now. It says, Whoso stopped his ears at the cry of the poor, he shall also cry himself, but shall not be heard. So self-preservation exonerates you from divine intervention. Because you are insensitive to others and only sensitive to yourself. He said, when you also need intervention, you won't find it. So a man who wants to live for himself will actually be separated to live for himself. If you want intervention in your life, you must first of all begin to, begin to intervene in the lives of others. If you don't know how to intervene in the lives of others, no matter how you cry, no matter the tongues you speak, no matter how bogus your message is, you will be left in a dry land. You too will not receive intervention. He said, if you block your ears to the cry of the poor when you cry, you know what it means? Oh, one day all of us will cry for something. And that day you cry desperately seeking intervention. He said, that day the ultimate ear too will be shut off from you. So the first danger of self-preservation is exoneration from divine intervention. Number two, second danger of self-preservation. Proverbs 28, 27. He said, he that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, but he that hideth his eyes shall walk in a curse. So the second danger of self-preservation is that you are sentenced perpetually to the path of lack. Find out people who are selfish and self-centered. Their lives reduces continuously until they spiral into nothingness. The Bible said, the libra soul shall be made fat. It says, him that watereth shall by himself be watered unto. You don't give because you have the resources. You actually give because you have the heart. And a man who does not have the heart to give can never find help. His path is already littered with lack. He may not see it. The little he has will soon finish. And when he finishes, he will see how he has hedged himself into nothingness and into oblivion. Number three, danger of self-preservation. Haggai chapter 1 verse 9. He said, Ye look for much, and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I blew upon it. Why, said the Lord of hosts, because my house is a waste, and you run away unto your own. Hope I told you that when self-preservation is fully blown, people use God. So when God's house is in lack, not just your neighbors now, even God, when his house was in lack, you turned away and went to find your own comfort. He said, when that happens, even the one you have, I will blow on it until your hands become empty. So the third danger of self-preservation is that it causes you to constantly reduce and not increase. So you find a man who is hedging to himself, watch him. Time will prove to you the direction he's going to. No matter the investment, no matter the strategy, he will constantly reduce. The forces of nature will fight him and God himself will fight him. He said this person is so selfish that he is not just insensitive to his neighbors. He said even the house of God is insensitive there. He said therefore the things he labored legitimately to gather you work hard, you are diligent. He said, when you take it home, I will blow on it. And from nowhere, you will find hospital bills will take 40% of your money. Accident, take 30%. And you are wondering, what is going on? The, a wind is being blown into your hand. This is what happens to these people. They only think, self, 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 self. Money till night, self. And so in order to help them look in the direction of God, he blows it off their hands. Number four, danger of self-preservation. 
Proverbs 26 verse 12. It says, Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? He said, there is no hope for that. He said, there is more hope for a fool than that man. A man who is wise in his own acts and treachery. He said, a fool has more hope than that man. Do you know who a fool is? The Bible says, a fool said in his heart, there is no God. That means a godless man has more hope than a man who works in self-preservation. So the fourth danger of self-preservation is that your future is unpredictable. No matter how beautiful and rosy it looks today, forget. The future of a fool is better than your future. That's why you can't afford to live in selfishness. Have you not seen all these wicked, wealthy men that exploit the poor, exploit the masses, and gather the money for themselves? The moment they die, after two years, their children want to go to Dubai and to Bahama Island. They will be doing birthday in a private jet. Sometimes they will do birthday in three jets. After two months, the whole money will vanish. That means the man's 60 years of embezzlement was a wasted life. That's why I said there's more hope for a fool. But the man that through faithfulness and diligence grows, he said that man, he said, a faithful man shall abound with blessings. He that maketh haste to reach shall not be innocent. That means the man who follows the way of God, the way of diligence and generosity, he said that man's end is blessings. But this one that is full of himself, after he gathers, he said it will be like an ostrich that lays an egg and don't sit on it and leaves it to be destroyed. That is how the end of that man will be. All this self-centeredness, selfish and self-oriented mentality, it has no end with God. It's not the way of the kingdom. And I will show you the way of the kingdom shortly. The fifth danger of self-preservation is ultimate rejection by God. God himself will reject you. 1 Samuel 15, verse 3. See what happened to King Saul. It's a long reading. I can't read it. God himself picked him as a king. But the point came, the guy became so self-centered. He didn't even bother about God anymore. Okay, maybe I read it. Let me read it so you just get the story. He said, God now spoke through Samuel to King Saul. He said, now go and smite the Amalek, Amalek and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have. Spare them not. Slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox, sheep, camel and asses. That's 1 Samuel 15 verse 3. From verse 8 to verse 15, see what happened. He said, when Saul went and smote the people, he said, number one, he took Agag, the king of, Am of the Amalekites, and utterly destroyed the people with the edge of the sword. He said, but Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fattens and of the lambs and all that was good and they did not destroy them. Everything that was vile and they, ref they refused and utterly destroyed. But all the good things they kept for themselves against the commandment of God. That's what self-preservation does. You think self so much that God becomes small to you. Now see what happened. In verse 10, he said, Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repented me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he is turned back from me, for he had not performed my commandments. And he said, The thing grieved Samuel, and he cried and prayed all night. Verse 12, he said, When Samuel arose early in the morning to meet Saul, he said, he told it to Saul, saying, he said, and when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told to Samuel, saying, Saul came to Camel, and behold, he set himself upon a place, and he's gone about and passed on and gone down to Gilgal. That means Saul went to Gilgal. Summary. And Samuel came to Saul. The moment Saul saw him, you see why I said you are wise in your own conceit. The moment Saul saw him, see what he said. And Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. He began to hear the prophet of God. Salutations, dear prophet of Jehovah Elohim. <laughs> and Samuel said, 
what minute then this bleating of the sheep in my ears the guy doesn't have time for human applause he came on a mission he's not a man who is moved by salutations and gifts why am I hearing the bleating of the sheep here so and so said they not me the people became king they have brought them from the Amalekites for the people spared of the sheep <laughs> and of oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord the reason we collected this bribe is because we want to advance God's kingdom <laughs> Lord your church needs to move forward that's why we did a bit of exaggeration how can the people of the born woman only be making money God is not looking for a thief to advance his kingdom we gathered all of these so that we can sacrifice to the most high God. How can our God not be, be, receive a worthy sacrifice? You go and steal two billion from government coffers and then you bring tithe of 200 million. You say, well, I had a burden for the evangelism. Uh, keep your money, sir. Keep your money. God is not looking for thieves to advance his kingdom. I, I had the body, you know, when they spoke about the evangelism, I say, I will buy all the equipment. If God needed help, he won't ask you. Church is not looking for donation. What we give are offerings. Because it's an act of worship. And the offering is accepted when your life is first of all accepted. Look at what God did to him. Samuel began to talk to him. And the Lord sent thee from verse 18. On a journey and said, Go, utterly destroy the sinners. Wherefore then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? But you have flied upon the spoil and you have done evil in the sight of the Lord. Verse 21. When Samuel turned to go, Saul held him. Don't embarrass me before the people. Even if God has rejected me, at least show me respect as king. Are you seeing self-preservation? When they told David that God was angry with him, he tore his garment, poured ashes on his head, and fell on the ground, and wept from morning to night. They told King Saul, God has rejected you. He was more conscious about the elder. Let's do some level of diplomacy here. We don't need to, to show everybody that something is wrong. Calm down. Calm down, prophet. Calm down. Prophet, calm down. We can settle this. They say God has rejected you. You are thinking of the people. And so told, Samuel told him, God has rejected you. When Samuel wanted to go, he held his garment and he tore. Ah! And Samuel now entered his prophetic authority. This one, God didn't say it. <laughs> but I want to tell you, I'm a prophet. The ones God say, we hear. And the ones we say, God hears. Did you not hear? He said, the Lord confirmed the words of his servant. He performs the counsels of his messenger. He said, see, your kingdom has been torn. So self-preservation ultimately leads to rejection. Ultimately, that's the danger of self-preservation. A point comes, you are a global singer, but God has rejected you. Because all your life you were singing for honorarium. And so you turn down the small meetings and accept the big meetings. And you collect the money after four years you are still singing but God has taken your voice and you don't know why the glory is no longer there and you are wondering what happened God has rejected you after God rejected King Saul he was still on the throne for a long time but he was sitting on a on a on, a, on an aisle the glory had gone God had met met somebody else who is in the wilderness because God doesn't need a palace Anywhere he is, is heaven. Many have been rejected. That business you are doing, you've cut corners for too long. Because you want to build a house. And building a house is your greatest pursuit. And you can cut corners, you can sabotage, you can compromise to build the house. An undiscerning pastor will come and say, we consecrate this house in the name of the Lord. And take his seed and go away. You will give that seed and it will be big, but God has rejected you. 
This is what the spirit of the age is interested in. That you come to a point where God will reject you even while you are calling on his name. And when you get to eternity, you say, Lord, we cast out devils in your name. You say, away, away from me, thou that walk in iniquity. You don't know you were rejected 30 years before you left the earth. I rejected you 40 years before you left the earth. I know they eventually ordained you a bishop. But I, I rejected you when you were a deacon. So that thing you call promotion from deacon to pastor to bishop to archbishop, it was among men. In the realm of the angels, the man to left to a boy in the wilderness. Ah, did you notice that they started hearing that boy's voice even though he didn't have a platform? I left you. The authority left. You only had decorations. That's what happens to men. <laughs>